Bogota, Colombia. Monica Montanez is recovering from the trauma of a premature birth. Andres. Andre, come and give the baby a little kiss. Her daughter Angie was born six weeks early. She still needs oxygen, but her doctors have prescribed an unusual method of treatment. They've simply sent her home. <laughs> 8,000 kilometers away in Portsmouth, England, another early arrival. Max was born three months premature. But here too, doctors have decided the best person to care for him is his mother, Wendy. Two women from very different worlds, but both part of the same innovative program for treating mm. premature babies. It's known as kangaroo care. Monica and Wendy are being used as human incubators. It's like finishing the pregnancy, but with the baby outside the body rather than inside. The mother has to carry the baby 24 hours a day, skin to skin. Kangaroo Care was born here at the Mother and Child Institute in Bogota. Initially, it was simply a response to a chronic lack of resources. As this home video shows, babies were being forced to share incubators. It began in 1978 in a maternity ward which was gigantic, which had 30,000 births a year and which catered for the poorest part of the city. There were resources, but they were insufficient to meet demand. Doctors decided to take the babies out of the incubators as soon as they were stable and use instead the mother's own body warmth. They were startled to find it not only saved money, but also lives. It reduced the rates of inter-hospital infection, it reduced the rates of abandonment, and they had much more success in stimulating the mother's milk. Today it's run out of this small clinic in the centre of Bogota, where Monica and her husband John take Angie for a daily checkup. French-born Natalie Sharpak has worked on the programme since 1989. The kangaroo program enables the baby to be integrated into the family. We've shown that the mother feels much more competent to look after her baby. Angie must have skin-to-skin -skin contact 24 hours a day. You never put the baby in bed. She must always be in this position. You only take her out of this position to feed her and to change her nappy. She also has a brief examination every day. The doctors check carefully for any drop in weight. <laughs> but Angie is making good progress. At the moment, this baby is doing very well. She needs oxygen just for feeding and sleeping. She's putting on weight well. But Monica's has been a double trauma. From the clinic, she and John must travel across town to one of Bogota's main hospitals, where Angie has a twin, Paula. She's weaker than Angie. She remains in hospital, but only because Monica has all her time taken up with Angie. Initially, both babies were in incubators. For me, it was terrible. Every time I went to visit them, I cried, always. You see their little arms have needles in them. They're connected to all this machinery. It's terrible. You feel sad. You feel impotent because you can do nothing for them. Kangaroo Care keeps this period of separation as short as possible. It provides a chance for both mothers and fathers to bond with their babies in those vital early weeks. And it is this which has attracted the attention of paediatricians from wealthier countries. It began as an alternative to minimal care units, but what's nice is that it has spread around the world and kangaroo care is now used as a way of humanising high technology. At St Mary's Hospital in Portsmouth, England, senior staff nurse Teresa Griffin is one of a small but growing band of converts. The whole process is just, it's just fabulous to watch and you just see these parents who are so sort of stressed out and tense and the babies go on to them, the babies fall fast asleep and the parents, you just see the stress just come out of their faces and it's fabulous. But in Western hospitals, the method is modified to take account of different lifestyles. Kangaroo care being mixed with a much more traditional, high-tech approach. In an ideal world, yes, you would have the parents here 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but. 
the Western culture, the women, you know, they've got other commitments, often as not. They don't have their babies with them 24 hours a day, but mothers like Wendy Fortune nevertheless spend a substantial part of each day with their baby and are equally enthusiastic about the programme. Oh, fantastic. Like I say, when we first got here and they did it, it was a bit weird at first. I was thinking, they let me hold my baby skin to skin, and I was thinking, is he going to get cold? And you're a bit frightened at first, but it's lovely. It's a lovely feeling. In Bogota, Angie's father is proud the method was developed in Colombia, a country so often in the news for the wrong reasons. Colombia tiene muy malas referencias. Colombia has a very bad reputation. People always talk about drug trafficking or terrorism. And when you go to another country, the first thing they ask you about is cocaine. But it's great that Colombia is the cradle of the kangaroo method. It's now spread all around the world. It saved the lives of many babies and has brought happiness to many fathers. It makes me want to cry because I'm so happy for my daughters. Angie, meanwhile, is growing restless. What's wrong? Do you want to get out? Do you want to get out? It's a key signal. She's feeling uncomfortable. She wants to be normal. Her days as a kangaroo are almost over, and she's ready to emerge from the pouch a normal, healthy baby.